Since the beginning of time, numbers have been deemed sacred. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 14, 15, 32, and 33 all share Masonic symbolism. Hi, I'm John Sane, and welcome to Greenville Lodge number 3 of Free and Accepted Masons of Tennessee. Today, we will be talking about geometry. Wisdom starts now. Without geometry, there would be no Freemasonry. The origin of the word geometry is of ancient Greek descent. It is made from the word geo, meaning earth, and the word metron, meaning measurement. Geometry is the measurement of earth. In more refined terms, it is a branch of mathematics concerned with shape, size, and the relative position of figures in space. In Freemasonry, no geometrical problem is more celebrated than the 47th problem of Euclid. The 47th problem of Euclid is a discovery made by Pythagoras of Samos and is more famously known as the Pythagorean Theorem. The story of Pythagoras is much like that of Freemasonry, obscure and at times covered with darkness. Pythagoras was a great mathematician, philosopher, and political leader during the 6th century BC. But a lack of educational opportunity forced young Pythagoras to travel the known parts of the world at the time. He was greatly inspired by the Egyptian pyramids and spent time studying their methods. The Pythagorean theorem states that in right triangles, the sides a squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse c squared. Sides A and B make up the right angle. Side C, or the hypotenuse, is always across from the right angle. If side A is 4, side B is 3, and side C is 5, and we square each side, we get this familiar figure. By using the values from our right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we find that 4 squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared, or 16 plus 9 equals 25. The Pythagorean theorem can also be expressed in this graphical representation. If we take c squared, or 25 boxes, we see that a squared, or 16 boxes, and b squared, 9 boxes, both fit inside the c squared box, proving that a squared plus b squared does in fact equal c squared. In Tennessee, triangles are created all throughout the degree work. But the Pythagorean theorem truly shines in the placement of the three lesser lights. If we start from a central location and take three steps east, five steps south, and seven steps west, three, five, seven steps, we create a six, eight, ten right triangle, which is in a ratio of three, four, and five. Wise men who claimed to have answers to life and the universe during this time were called sages. Pythagoras strongly disliked the term sage and deemed it an unfit title. He coined a new term that is still being used today. The new word was derived from two Greek words, philos meaning lover and sophia meaning wisdom or truth. A philosopher is a lover of wisdom and truth and is the study of the principles of being or of knowledge. It is one who regulates conduct 
and actions by principles of philosophy. In 525 BC, the Persian king Cambyses II invades Egypt to end the reign of the Egyptian pharaohs. Pythagoras hated violence and was taken to Babylon as a prisoner. When he was released years later, he returned to his home in Samos, but was disgusted by what his home had become. The land that he remembered from his youth was devastated by corruption, oppression, and neglect. In 530 BC, Pythagoras, now in his late 50s, left Samos and traveled to Croton, Italy. This is where he created a new brotherhood and developed his own school of thought, focusing on art, science, and philosophy. Pythagoras was the first to propose the idea that Earth is round. Many of Pythagoras' theories gave rise to later ideas founded by Plato and Galileo. Socrates was aware of all the theories proposed by Pythagoras and rejected all of them except for one, the immortality of the soul. Early Masonic lodges held their meetings in local taverns or members' homes. And there were three items you could always be sure to find. A piece of chalk, a mop, and a pail of water. The chalk was used to draw the elaborate symbols on the floor for the explanatory lectures. The mop and pail of water was used by the candidate at the conclusion of the degree, a lesson in secrecy. But it's not important if you know what the secrets of masonry are. The point is that if I cannot keep something as simple as a grip or a password to myself, then how could I be trusted with anything? The 47th problem of Euclid in Freemasonry has one problem. If the Pythagorean theorem is so significant in Freemasonry, then why not call it by its most commonly referred to name? Why call it the 47th problem of Euclid? Is there further Masonic meaning behind Euclid? Very little is known about the history of Euclid apart from his great works in geometry. There is no record of his birth or even what he looked like. It is argued that he lived sometime between the death of Plato and the birth of Archimedes between 347 BC and 287 BC. It is also believed that Euclid was hired as one of the original faculty members of the Great Library of Alexandria in Egypt. Euclid's lifelong study and practice was devoted to developing one of the greatest mathematical works of all time, The Elements. The Elements consisted of 13 volumes and is considered to be the very first textbook in history. We still use a similar format in creating classroom textbooks today. What Euclid did was revolutionary. He took extreme care and precision in creating step-by-step -step proofs for solving geometrical problems. The Elements is the second most printed book in history. It follows closely behind the great light which we all know, the Holy Bible. The Elements is a book that has been used for centuries to pass on useful knowledge. President Abraham Lincoln used Euclid's work to fine-tune his mind. He once said that he used the Elements to learn what it truly meant to demonstrate. The first problem of Euclid states that if you take a line of known length, you can create a perfect equilateral triangle. If we start with points A and B and draw circle A, we immediately see a familiar Masonic symbol, the point within the circle. If we draw circle B, and connect the intersecting points, then we cre can create two perfect equilateral triangles. Triangles have been deemed a symbol of deity for many years. What's more interesting is we see the pagan symbols for male and female. The blade is a symbol of male. The cup or chalice is a pagan symbol of female. The most interesting is if we interlace these two triangles, we get the seal of King Solomon. 
After examining the work of Euclid, it brings us to our next puzzling question. Who discovered pie? No, not this delicious treat. Pi is the 16th letter of the Greek alphabet and used in math to express the formula circumference divided by diameter. It is considered a mathematical constant because regardless of how big or small the circle is, the value remains the same. Well, it turns out that Euclid was the first to use pi in a recorded system as a mathematical constant. It's believed that the Egyptians knew about pi during the time of Pythagoras and estimated its value to be 22 over 7 or 22 sevenths. However, if one person is to get credit for the discovery of pi, it has to go to Archimedes. Now that's a sweet fact. It's difficult to take the measurement around a circle, but it's easy to take a measurement of a straight line. Archimedes' method for discovering pi involved the use of polygons. He started with a six-sided polygon and ended with a 96-sided polygon to come up with an estimated value of pi in a range of 3.1408 to 3.1428. What is even more compelling is written evidence in the Holy Scripture that Grandmaster Hiram Abiff was well versed in knowledge of Pi. In 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 23, just after the description of the two brazen pillars that adorn King Solomon's temple, we find this. And he made a molten sea ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. The object described in the Bible verse was a large water bath used by priests of the temple for ceremonial spiritual cleansings. If we take the circumference, which was 30 cubits, and divide it by the diameter, which was 10 cubits, we come up with a value of pi, which in this example is 3. A pretty darn close value to the actual value of pi, 3.14. If you or someone you know is interested in becoming a Freemason, remember, ask one to be one. Euclid once said, the laws of nature are but the mathematical thoughts of God. Until next time, thanks for watching.